How the hell are you? Good heavens. Every time I hear the rules, I think to myself, there is an irony in the fact that I am not much of a rules person and I helped write those. <laughs> Which is why I love it when someone else enforces them. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I had an experience, but in order to understand it, I wanna go back to a, another memory. I had a, an, a question somebody asked me, so what was the most embarrassing thing you remember? And I, and I realized that every time I walk up on a stage, I freak out and lose my mind, and I can't think about anything but like the fact that I'm trying not to pee myself right now. <laughs> it's, that's pretty much, oh, thank you. Thank, the floor is not scotch guarded. We don't recommend it. I hope so, because the way this evening, you guys are ready. You guys are really ready. So that's why you wear big pants. It is why I wear big pants, because I, I hope no one notices the pee. <laughs> that's on my resume now. <laughs> oh, God. So, wow, the night I crashed and burned looked just like this. And every other Monday, Monday night for the last two years. So, I have never been good with the rules. I'm actually kind of a craven coward. And my solution to this has been to game the system, to change the rules whenever I could. I remembered, because somebody asked me, what was the most embarrassing moment? And I, and I, I locked, I couldn't remember it. And so I took some time and I thought about it and I came up with an answer to what is the first time I was ever really embarrassed and felt this, this change the game come into play. And I thought it was really significant to my life. I was a little kid and my father was a poker player which meant that my nursery was a card playing room with a table and leather blackout drapes and don't judge me. It probably looked just like this now that I think about it. <laughs> I haven't really thought about that part of this till now. It explains everything. But it was kind of, it wasn't, I know it sounds torturous, but it actually it was cool because it was like watching a really big grade B gangster movie every single week. It was like these wannabe wise guys playing cards. It was like something out of Guys and Dolls. They would bet on anything. And one of the things they bet on was me because... I was young and I'd achieved some of my first accomplishments. I knew all 25 of my letters. <laughs> That's right. Which ones were you missing? Oh. <laughs> Therein lies the story. I wasn't missing, I just tried to, tried to brush it under the rug, hope you wouldn't notice. I, I had a speech impediment when I was learning my letters and I couldn't say wobble, wobble woo, w, I couldn't say it to save my life. And one of my dad's friends figured this out and figured he could make a buck. Because I had children's blocks with letters and they would show me a letter, I'd say the letter and everybody would cheer. And he went, oh, but I could, he can't say this and he won't say it because he's embarrassed. And so he bet my dad. And that part I've been told, but the part I remember was sitting there and the first letter was B. I said, B, because I know my ABCs. Then it was J. Just trying to get through this monologue, dude. <laughs> Seriously, no, Jay, and then inevitably, and I locked, I froze, and then something weird happened in my mind, and I saw the world just a little differently, and I reached out, and I grabbed the block, and I turned it over, and I handed it back to him, and I said, M. <laughs> As in, I got this mu- I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but I learned something valid. What reminded me of this was an amazing experience. I, I have been trying to raise my bar. The Circus Freaks, we've been talking about doing a lot of new gigs, a lot of new things. One of the things I, I did recently is I worked as a birthday party clown, which is the Vietnam of clowning. I, here, you guys are with me. If I do something stupid, you're like, yay, you're stupid. There, small children will eat you. If, really, if you're on the internet, you're a birthday party clown, you see this, my heart goes out to you for the trench, you are the trenches. And you're also that first clown that a little kid sees, and you know that. So anything you do, there's no pressure now, because of course, whatever they, you do is what they're gonna remember for the rest of their therapy-laden lives. And these are kids whose first experience with clown was not the circus, but Stephen King's It. It's bad, so I'm thinking to myself, I'm going out there, I'm gonna be brave, 
because I need to learn this life lesson. I need to know how to do this. I need to know how to get out there. And I walk out there, and they told me all I have to do is rove around and juggle and play with kids. It'll be fun. I say, great. I'll go have a good time. It'll be great. I walk out to the party, and they say, there's your stage. No preparation, no stage show, no plan. Surprise! 40 kids. <laughs> and their family. And I say, okay. And I walk up on the stage and I drop my stuff and I bounced a ball. One rubber ball, I bounced it on the stage and it went sailing through the air. And it landed in the brisket. <laughs> There's no good to be had here. Now, something magical happened at this point. I noticed that they had picnic tables and the front row of the picnic table looked, well, sort of like this. People in various states of silliness with various amounts of teeth. Oh, I'm sorry, it was just, a, it was just there. I... <laughs> I was not in Oklahoma, I was in hell. <laughs> Oklahoma, do you in Oklahoma? Pretty close, but I, I bounced the ball. I, 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 into the brisket, it wasn't even cool enough to be shawarma. I just, there it was. And I heard one little kid over here save me and said, ew. Everybody do that real quick. At this moment in your life, you can change the universe because you can either go, yeah, I screwed up, I'm sorry, or you can join that. And next thing I knew, I was standing there going, ew, ah, and then my clown partner saw this as an opportunity to bring me back the ball. <laughs> the mission I was after was accomplished. We had done the thing that is the clown job. You have to respect the stage, and then this fourth wall thing, you have got to flush it down the toilet the minute you show up. And I think it's good advice for every performer I have ever met. At that moment, the world changed. The game changed. And I knew it had worked because the next thing I knew, I was being dragged bodily into a bounce house, which got me off the stage, so that was good. But really, my chin bounced against the floor, so not a great moment in clowning. And they're cheering and they're dancing around and, and, I'm, and I'm done and I'm like, thank you and I'm gonna go home and soak in a tub of Epsom salts because underneath the red nose and the baggy pants, I'm an old man and that stuff hurts. <laughs> and I go and I get on the baggy pants, a hand grabbing me and says, you have to come for cake. Aww. So what? Uh, you have to come for cake. Next time another one grabbed me and at this point if I don't go, I'm now the clown not wearing pants in front of a bunch of children. <laughs> I understand, internet, that that slot is already taken. I don't want to know about it. But I sat there with these kids singing happy birthday, cheering my heart out, and finally extracting myself. And it was because we got rid of this. This is dangerous to just stand up here as a performer and go, I'm going to do my thing now. Yay. But the minute I go out here and I notice you're out here and you're out here and you're out here, we jokes and energy and good. And that's what we're here for. And I hope you come with me on that adventure tonight. Welcome to the open stage.